So today we're going to be going over properties of alkanes. Okay? Um, so properties of alkanes, the most important one is going to be melting point and boiling point. So uh, these can affect from a lot of different uh, properties. They can, a lot of different things can change them, whether they increase or decrease. But uh, we're just going to go over the, the two basic ones, which is going to be molecular weight and branching. Okay? So if we increase the molecular weight of, of some molecule, uh, what's going to happen to the melting point and the boiling point? So they're both going to increase. Okay? So melting point and boiling point are going to increase. Um, if you increase branching, so for example, um, in this case, we, we increase branching by moving a molecule, um, a carbon from just straight chain out into the middle, um, that's going to decrease the melting point and decrease the boiling point. Okay? So it should be pretty easy to remember. Uh, one will increase and one will decrease, and they both do the same. So you know that if melting point is going to increase, then boiling point is going to do the same thing. So we just have two examples right here, pretty simple. Um, so if we're going to be asking what's going to have the higher melting point and higher boiling point um, in the first example, well, we know this is based on molecular weight because there's no branching in them. Um, so this one's going to have the higher uh, melting point and higher boiling point due to its higher molecular weight. Now in this case, we have, um, you know, we have still the same molecule, they're isomers of each other. Uh, they still have four carbons, right? So the same molecular weight, so we don't look at the first one. But now in terms of branching, um, you know, increased branching on the one on the left, so that means it's going to have a lower boiling point and lower melting point, right? So we saw previously how molecular weight and branching affects the melting point and boiling point. So now let's, let's look at hydrogen bonding, because that's pretty important as well. So increase in hydrogen bonding, um, will have an increase in molecular weight or increase in boiling point, okay? Um, so let's see, remember what hydrogen bonding is. Our most stereotypical example is, for example, water, all right? So what happens is that uh, we have a, a weak intermolecular force in between these two water molecules, and it's always sandwiched between um, H's and O, and this O can, um, it's hydrogen bonding between O N or F, okay? So just know there has to be hydrogen surrounding these, this O molecule right there, um, and that's how the hydrogen bonds work, okay? So anything with the O, N, or F that also is attached to a hydrogen, at least one of them, um, it has to be sandwiched in between um, an H like that. So we have O, H, and then O, right? So increase in hydrogen bonding will increase boiling point. So we have this example like that, this one would have an increase in melting point and also an increase in boiling point. Okay, so hydrogen bonding will have an increase in melting point, increase in boiling point. So since we were talking about trends, I thought that we would also talk about um, other trends in terms of um, alkane molecules, specifically carbocations, radicals, and carbanions. Okay, so carbocations, for example, um, it's when it loses its electrons as well as the atom. So if there's a hydrogen attached there, um, and the hydrogen somehow took the um, took the electrons as well, you have a carbocation. Um, we'll see later um, when we have to add a halogen onto an alkane, we're going to form a radical, and it's when there's only one electron instead of two. Um, and our carbanion, um, similarly, it's when it loses its atom, but it doesn't lose its electrons. For example, if this was an H here, um, the H would lose, but the electrons would go back onto that carbon molecule right there. So that's the carbanion. Okay? In terms of stability versus reactivity, okay? um, the first one, we're going to see that tertiary is going to be the, the most stable. It's going to be the most stable in terms of car carbocations. So in terms of reactivity, we would see the exact opposite because stability and reactivity are completely opposite from each other. Okay? If something is more stable, why would it want to react? Right? If it was less stable, then it would definitely want to be very reactive, which is why the primary is very stable, so less, re very, very reactive, all right? So now onto radicals. Radicals are gonna follow the same trend as carbocations and carbanions are gonna have the opposite from the two above. So this is something you just have to memorize. Um, you can kind of piece it together in your mind if you have some type of trend that you can remember. Uh, but this is more just a, a, a memorizing thing. But it's pretty simple. The, the carbocations and radicals act similarly together. Carbanions work oppositely. 